Hello, everyone that's in the webinar so far. We're just going to wait a few more minutes for a few more of our attendees to trickle in here, and then we'll get started. Thanks for your patience. Alrighty, so we're going to get started today as our last few uh, webinar attendees trickle in here. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you may be in the world. Um, if you've ever attended one of our webinars before, you've probably received an email or received a gift card from me for attending. If so, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. We're very excited to have you here. I'm also joined by Jim Vada, our Director of Global Wi-Fi and Solutions, also our CWNE number 183. Jim, go ahead and say hello. Hey, Erica. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Perfect. So we're so excited to have everyone here today um, at our Wi-Fi Performance Monitoring Design Tool Best Practice Webinar Series. So we're going to get started here. Jim, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, thanks. So like yeah. you said, I'm a Director of Global Wi-Fi Solutions here at 7Signal. I'm a CWNE and a CCNP wireless. And uh, my most recent experience is in uh, wireless engineering was in a hospital system. Uh, but I've got experience in other verticals as well. And I've used, uh, uh, deployed all the major uh, WLAN vendors gear. You can follow me on Twitter at Jim Vada, and I have a blog at framebyframewifi.net. If you just want to follow my Wi-Fi thoughts, probably just check out my blog. But that's me. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jim. No problem. Yeah. And so before we jump into our webinar and give you a lot of great information, we're going to give, just give a little bit of a background about 7Signal and who we are. We um, were founded in Finland in 2007 by some Nokia engineers. They eventually relocated to our headquarters where we currently are, which is in Cleveland, Ohio, back in 2012. There was a lot of wireless knowledge and talent in this area, so they decided to bring the company here. Within the past year, we've converted to a 100% SaaS-based solution, and we're also certified in over 40 different countries Daily, we monitor over 4 million devices, and we add on to this number daily as we add on new customers um, to our, our organization as well. And we also have 11 patents, included one in, in, that just came in in April in 2019 for our One Solution Mobile Eye. So our solutions have been tested again and again and have many different capabilities and strengths um, within the solutions that a lot of our um, competitors don't have. And to just dive a little bit deeper into what I mean when I say software as a service, um, our solutions are a complete cloud-based experience, and they operate from a proactive framework. So all of the testing that we do within our solutions, we, we do in a proactive way. How do we do this? So we do this through reporting, alerting, and analytics. 
So we use different test, testing methods, like the ones you can see on this wheel, for example, um, roaming, um, packet capture, throughput, um, jitter. These are just some different tests that we run to, to ensure that your wireless environment is always uh, steady and there's not going to be any downtime or any issues. And we can tell this before it even happens. And this, this we do this with our one enterprise solution within the device and infrastructure tools within our solutions. And our solutions are vendor agnostic. So we work with many different um, wireless LAN access infrastructure companies. As you can see here on the left, we work with Cisco, Aruba, Arrowhive, numerous different um, infrastructure companies. Um, we also work great alongside with all of your business intelligence notifications to give you all of the alerting powers from Slack or Splunk. Um, these are just things that are going to you know, keep you aware of what's going on within your network before there's even any uh, downtime or issues. <clears throat> and in the bottom right, you can see you also work great along with all of the Internet of Things um, platforms as well. So our solutions are both our Sapphire and Mobileye are both very versatile and vendor agnostic. And before I hand the controls over to Jim, I just wanted to mention we have free regional user groups. Um, we have one coming up at the end of July in Denver, Colorado, that's going to be held by one of our longstanding customers, Kaiser Permanente. So that we will, we will be there with Kaiser and we're very excited about that. Would love for you to join us if you can. Um, we also have one in September on the 17th in Nashville, right before Wi-Fi Trek. So if you're attending, feel free to reach out and I can get you registered for that one as well. Also, we have one in October on the 7th in Prague as well. So if any of these user groups look interesting to you and you'd like uh, to be registered, you can use the link below or you can reach out to Don Cook or myself and we will get you registered as well. And with that being said, I think I'm going to hand the controls over to Jim. All right. Thanks, Erica. So yeah. uh, today we're talking about uh, Wi-Fi performance monitoring as a design tool. And, uh, you know, there are really, uh, really three different um, classes of Wi-Fi performance monitoring systems. So there are, uh, you know, I like to think about uh, uh, them as hardware-based uh, sensors like the Sapphire Eye. Um, also, um, we have uh, software-based agents like Mobileye, and then there's infrastructure-style um, um, uh, performance monitoring tools as well. And so, um, these are all different approaches. All of them work. They all give you good um, uh, data that can used can be used for uh, for the design process. Um, but uh, you know, in, for us in particular, uh, we're going to be focused on um, our seven signal products and what they can do for you. So there we go. I was having a little bit of trouble advancing the slides. So if we look at uh, you know one of the issues um, with traditional systems is is you don't have visibility all the way out to the clients, right? So you're you're really trusting what the APs and infrastructure um, can deduce uh, from their own telemetry. But it's hard to know what a real client experience is um, without an agent out there or um, something like we have with a sensor, right? So this was what makes us different. We are, our sensors and agents sit outside the network, act like clients, and tell you the true performance of your infrastructure uh, without having to worry about the effect of code bugs or a lack of visibility into certain things or uh, you know clients that are sticky and don't roam well if we can get visibility and all of that so we can tell the true Wi-Fi experience okay so we have two products at Seven Signal, Mobile Eye and Sapphire Eye, they both have uses for um, uh, they both have uses for design, and we'll talk a little bit about um, both of them. 
Mobileye is a software agent that runs on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android clients. It gives you uh, Wi-Fi uh, telemetry from those devices. So if they're bad, if they're bad at roaming, if they have old drivers, you can see all that, um, and you can also tell what their experience was um, as far as application performance goes as well. Sapphire Eye is a hardware-based sensor that um, does passive tests, where it's just listening to the RF and generating uh, reports based on that, and active tests, where it connects to the Wi-Fi like a client and gives you uh, uh, a whole suite of active tests you can run uh, in that state. And both of them report up to the IQ dashboard in the cloud where you can see all the data and reports uh, from, the, from those products. So the Wi-Fi performance monitoring systems that I mentioned, the hardware sensor, software agents, and network as a sensor approaches. We're really gonna talk about hardware and software agent today. And a little disclaimer, you know, uh, when we're talking about what I'm telling you today is, is a, are you know some ways to augment the design process. Uh, it's it doesn't uh, doesn't mean you can't uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do site surveys anymore. Of course you should. Um, it doesn't mean you know you you have a shortcut around some best practices. No, this is really based on those best practices and ways to get better visibility into some of the things that you need to know about when you're uh, doing wireless design. So the first phase in Wi-Fi design is requirements gathering. And if uh, anybody out there has experience um, in design, uh, you know that this can really be painful and require a lot of effort. Often a customer may not know uh, exactly what their Wi-Fi client population is, um, and it might be difficult to collect uh, what their capabilities and performance of those clients are. Um, if it's a greenfield deployment, um, there's always a big question of mark, mark about, okay, well, what's in the RF now? What are the things that I need to worry about? What are the, ch you know, what are, are, are there, uh, 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 Ex in incumbent users of the spectrum that I need to be aware of that may impact my channel plan and um, the performance overall. And then, um, you know, the APs that you select, what is their real performance? We have, a, you get a data sheet from the vendor, but, you know, with the code that you land on and the clients that are actually going to be in use, what is the real performance you get? And then the applications in use as well. What are what are the applications that the customer has and has to support, and what are their um, actual requirements? That's all hard to gather, and some of our tools can assist you with that as well. So first, uh, what are the clients that are out there, um, out there in the environment? So Mobileye um, is perfect for this. So you get Mobileye deployed. It can be bulk deployed with uh, Microsoft SCCM, and it can be pushed out with an MDM to your mobile devices, and it'll tell you exactly what your client um, inventory is. Here's a report from Mobileye of of the Windows devices in a specific environment, and it'll also show you the wireless adapters and the driver versions that they're running. So suddenly you get really uh, valuable intelligence about that. Um, and right away, you can see some things like that 7260 with really old drivers. You can call that out to the customer and say, oh, you know, you, here's, a, here's a bad Wi-Fi client. These drivers are too old, needs to be updated, and that can get fixed uh, during the, you know, design process. Or you can just call that out in your final report and say, hey, by the way, well, I saw this and it needs to get fixed. If you don't do that, whosever computer that is, you know, they're going to point the finger at you uh, for their continued bad Wi-Fi experience, uh, right? Because you came in and promised uh, to fix the, the bad Wi-Fi. They spent a lot of money on a new design and implemented it, but that particular machine is still having trouble. And of course, this is a client-side issue. 
So really valuable to get uh, insight into that. So long-term spectrum analysis. This is something you can do with Sapphire I. So we talked about greenfield deployments where you're not really sure what's in the RF. And if the customer you know, has requirements for uh, uh, the use of the 2.4 gigahertz band, maybe they have some legacy devices or some IoT stuff that just has to run in the 2.4 gigahertz band, you, this is a great way to get a feel for um, you know, what's the real performance gonna be like? So here's a perfect example of you know, something you don't wanna see. In this uh, spectrogram, you can see for about a two hour period, something was just blasting away across most of the 2.4 gigahertz band, some source of non-Wi-Fi interference. And then it went away. So if you were gonna try and pick this up in a you know, point in time site survey with a spectrum analysis tool, you'd probably miss it. But if you left a Sapphire Eye uh, sensor behind uh, with this spectrum analysis running and collecting this historical data, you could go back and review really what's out there over a much longer period of time and be able to catch things like this, uh, which again, very valuable to be able to identify these things and call them out um, during the design phase. And then we have a lot in the capacity planning phase that we can help with. So, you know, we, uh, again, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, specs on data sheets and assumptions that are made uh, that you really just don't have to do um, if you have real data from real clients and, and real APs. And we can help uh, uh, determine all those real numbers rather than using assumptions and hypotheticals. So here's a, here, here's a great example. So these are, uh, these charts need some explanation, but, uh, but, but I think you'll get it. On, on the, what you're seeing are um, two groups of APs. So the chart on the left is the previous generation of three spatial stream 802.11 AC APs um, from a single vendor. And on the right is the current generation of three spatial stream 802.11 AC, AP, uh, AC APs from the same vendor. So you'd probably expect them, uh, all things equal, to be using the same data rates most of the time. So what we're seeing here is uh, APs um, in the same environment with the same SNR in the, you know, designed the same way. Um, and being, we're, we're looking at the data rates they're using with our SAFRI sensors. So the clients are, are static. The previous uh, generation AP is using these high data rates quite a bit. We're seeing some, single spatial stream operation here at 78 megabits, but high data rates most of the time. That's what you want to see. The current generation AP, no, we're seeing a larger kind of trend towards two spatial stream data rates, right? 173 megabits per second. That's that's uh, MCS 8 at uh, with a 20 megahertz wide channel. So um, this, and and you know, that might be fine, but it's good to know that the new generation of AP is a little bit less aggressive, uh, a bit more conservative in data rate shifting up to those highest data rates. So who is this valuable for, right? So if you're, if you're a higher ed and you've got a lecture hall and you thought, oh, I'll get these three spatial stream APs because all the kids showing up with MacBook Pros or three spatial streams will be able to take advantage of these really high data rates. Well, most of the time, um, that's not gonna be the case. Um, so with our tools, uh, you can see what the real data rates APs choose with your specific clients actually are. And on the other side, we can look at the data rates that clients are using. So these are all, um, this is again, a group of clients. They're all two spatial stream, 802.11 AC clients from the same chipset vendor. Uh, with a three spatial stream AP. We're just looking at uh, the, the clients on a single AP. And this is from a network that was designed for 
uh, high density. And these are very um, mobile clients. And uh, you know, if we just used our typical capacity planning tools, we would expect to see, you know, these MCS8, MCS7, MCS6, the majority of the time, right? But really, it's not quite, you know, as steep a slope as we'd expect to see. There's plenty of time where, you know, the these clients are down here using these lower data rates. And, you know, different reasons for that. They're mobile, RF conditions are changing. Um, uh, there could be uh, hidden nodes, things like that. It's a very busy network. So, uh, but again, our normal design process in this case would have suggested we'd see a much bigger bump in the, the higher data rates than we actually see. So really interesting to see that. Okay, and then when it comes to building your real design, like I just mentioned, uh, we've got real world inputs now that we can we can put into the design process. Um, and predictive designs especially benefit from that, right? The more real data you can replace with the assumed data, um, the better that's going to be, especially around capacity planning, like we just saw. Right, then we've got this phenomenon of survey list designs. And I said before, you should do site surveys. You'll get the best results with them. If you're not doing them, you're doing it wrong. But people still skip it sometimes, right? One of the reasons for that is maybe you're a big um, growing enterprise, highly distributed, you're opening new sites all the time, um, and you need to deploy Wi-Fi the way you deploy your route switch network. It has to be scripted and templatized, and you don't ever want to send a network engineer on site. You just want to have smart hands there to rack and stack everything, and then have some sort of automatic provisioning and configuration orchestration uh, tool uh, build uh, build the network for you based on you know the templates that you've designed. So site surveys are ex an extremely manual, time-intensive process that, that don't fit into that. They don't scale. Um, so you know you should do them, and and I'd I'd hate to go without doing them. But uh, if if you're in the case where you can't do that. Um, a performance monitoring tool can certainly help out with validation and the increased need for support um, for a, a design like that. So during the validation phase, you know, it's leaving behind a hardware sensor like the Sapphire Eye can be really valuable because you did your site survey, but you're still, you know, there's always a few places, a few corners, maybe there's a high capacity area you want extra visibility into leave behind a portable hardware sensors like the like the sapphire eye um, there so you're getting real intelligence about the performance of that network when it's loaded with real clients as well as its performance over time um, and and you, you also are setting up operations for success because now they've got a tool out there that's got all the wi-fi engineers um, uh, advanced troubleshooting tools built in. So it's got a, the ability to do over-the-air packet captures. It's got a spectrum analyzer. You can fire off uh, all sorts of manual tests. And you're also getting the visibility that comes along with a wireless performance monitoring system. So all in all, it's going to save you a lot of time in deploying your, your expensive engineering resources out to um, sites new sites especially. And then Mobileye uh, can help out a lot too. It's even easier to deploy, it's just software. So if you can get this software installed on the clients at the site, um, you can monitor the, uh, the real signal strength that they're receiving, right? You've had a design goal in mind for the RSSI uh, that you wanted to maintain everywhere. The clients can tell you if they're uh, receiving that. 
which is really valuable. And then if the clients are badly behaving clients, if they're roaming poorly, they're sticky clients, um, all that can be revealed with Mobileye as well. Are they getting the throughput that they need that you expected them to get um, in order to support the applications in use at the site? Mobileye can tell you that. And then um, security considerations. So a new site uh, probably has a new you know, firewall policy associated with it. And this is a good way to validate, hey, can all my clients um, reach the resources on the network that they need to um, wherever they are? And you know something that's neat too is with the channel scan result results that we get from clients, you'll be able to see the co-channel interference. And if there are many APs operating on the same channel, uh, which is obviously not a good uh, thing to do and something you want to reduce as much as possible during your design. So we talked a little bit about some of these things, and I'll show you ex some examples. So. Um, uh, our assessment pane in Mobileye kind of gives you that quick look of uh, what the performance of the new network is over time from a client's perspective. So we can see the Wi-Fi and roaming performance has been great for this guy, uh, but the network performance uh, we're not is not working. Right? There's probably an application server he can't reach. And throughput's kind of low, so that might need some investigation too. So we can look at the data behind that and see um, um, see the raw data, so we can make you know judgments about whether we're actually meeting our targets or not. So in this case, we're looking at a different client that's had some roaming problems, and we can see in this at this particular point in time, their signal strength dropped dropped to neg 90 dBm, totally unusable at neg 90 dBm. But the client at the same time was aware of uh, another AP at neg 54 dBm. And this comes from the client's own channel scan results. So we know this is what the client's really experiencing. A bad roaming client like this um, in a new Wi-Fi network is still gonna have a really poor Wi-Fi experience. So it's great to be able to get visibility into this and call this out for the customer or whoever's responsibility it is to get this fixed so the overall Wi-Fi experience is good. And then we talked about looking at the signal strength in general. This is average signal strength over time. So we can see if we're meeting the design requirements there. And we can also validate the clients are always using those highest data rates available, um, like this client. Um, was when we looked at it. Further, we can look at uh, network reachability and latency stats. So again, a, we could imagine this being a really important application server that all the clients in the enterprise need to be able to access. In this case, um, it can't. Probably a firewall is blocking it. Uh, but we can quickly call this out and uh, test that connectivity remotely without you know, asking somebody to open up a command prompt and type in ping and so on and so forth. We can do all this remotely and make sure that every client in the, at the site has access to the resources they need to. And we can test throughput as well. And we can test that on the LAN or out to the internet. We can deploy a, you know, what we have a, call a sonar server. It's the endpoint for tests. Um, wherever it makes sense, and make sure that we're able to deliver throughput um, to the clients that good enough that's good enough to support the application requirements that they have. So in this case, we can see uh, this the throughput in this particular client uh, in the upload direction dropped to two megabits per second, and you know that may not be good enough for the applications in use. So very valuable. And now you've kind of set up operations, as I alluded to before, uh, for having an easier go of it. Because um, if you leave behind a Sapphire Eye, they can, you can have them move it around, right? Hey, I heard there was bad Wi-Fi experiences in the conference room. Can you just go plug that in for me? 
you know, and they can be in some other time zone and you don't have to fly somebody out to go uh, troubleshoot that. And then, you know, software agents like Mobileye are really good for help desk and client visibility. Um, somebody calls in a Wi-Fi issue to the help desk and as long as they can collect the host name of that machine that was in use, um, they can go your knock or the help desk themselves, they can go into Mobileye and look at the real Wi-Fi experience from that client at the time to help you know if there was a real problem or not. And then other tools like network as a sensor, infrastructure as a sensor uh, can help with end-to-end -end visibility across the whole network if you're if you uh, uh, have uh, issues there as well. All right, and with that, I will turn it over back to Erica. All righty, thanks so much for all of that information, Jim. That was great. I learned I learned a lot with that. Um, yeah, my but pleasure. Now, yeah. Um, now we've kind of reached the point in um, the webinar where we'll start off with a trivia question where you have the opportunity to win a $25 gift card to Panera. And Panera Bread is one of our uh, very active customers. So we love having them um, as the customers as, as well and using their gift cards in our webinars. Um, so I will present a trivia question. You can use your GoToWebinar um, link on the side panel on the right side of your screen to enter in the chat or the question box, um, which, whichever works for you, and you can enter in your answer. First person to enter in the right answer will receive the gift card. Alrighty, so your question is, what is 14 dBm in milliwatts? So you can use your GoToWebinar panel to answer that question now. All right, we'll give about 10 more seconds to filter in some answers for our trivia question. All righty, so it looks like the first person to answer correctly was Josh Miller, and your answer was, whoops, let me go back one more. And your answer was 25 MW, so 25 milliwatts. Yeah, Josh, nice I'll be job, Josh. Yeah, I'll be sending your gift card uh, in the mail, Josh. So just make sure I have a correct uh, address for you after the webinar is finished as well. At this point, we'll also move on to questions and answers with Jim. So again, you can use the panel on the right-hand side of your screen to enter in any questions that you might have from the information presented and Jim will answer your questions. Alrighty, we'll give about 10 more seconds for those questions to filter in. Alrighty, well, Jim, I actually have a question for you regarding um, site surveys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do, do they need to be always done proactively before there's a wireless infrastructure in place or can this can it, is it something that can be done if someone, if, or if an organization already has a set um, infrastructure? Does that make sense? Yeah, so um, there are a couple approaches to that. Uh, a predictive uh, design uh, can be done without, you know, in a greenfield um, situation without uh, actually uh, walking and, and doing a site survey with a laptop with an AP on a stick. Okay. Um, but, uh, and I think that approach actually works very well, but it's not quite as accurate as AP on a stick. So okay. um, some people are still, some people still prefer that or they have certain situations where they still only will do AP on a stick. 
I think predictive is is uh, has come a long way and uh, uh, and can can work well for that. Now, in Got the you. case of uh, uh, a you know brownfield where you've got an existing WLAN and you're doing a redesign, I like to do a you know a full uh, walking site survey before doing that just to really figure out um, what the RF environment is and and uh, then you can start with the you know the a true view of that RF and then sort of uh, tweak it moving APs around uh, with uh, real attenuation data at that point. So uh, and there's different schools of thought on that, but generally the more real data you can get into your site survey, the, the higher the accuracy will be. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much for answering that for me. No problem. All righty. Well, everyone who is attending our webinar today, we want to thank you so much for your time um, that you spent with us either this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'll be sending you a Panera gift card as a as a sign of our thank you. Um, and, and Jim, thanks so much for attending today as well. Yeah, thanks. I had fun and thanks for everybody that uh, that came and attended today. Yeah, awesome. We have weekly webinars every week, so look out for those. And you can also look out for an email from myself or Don Cook after this. Um, but everyone, have a great rest of your day, and thanks for attending. Bye-bye.